Oh my goodness, I have fifth graders working with decimals. They're adding, they're subtracting, they're multiplying and dividing decimals, and I have no idea how to help them remember what to do with each one. What do I do? If you're asking those questions, I want you to stick around for this episode of Math 345 Support because I'm here to help you out. Hey everyone, my name is Sarah, but a lot of third, fourth, and fifth graders know me as Miss McCarthy. While I create a ton of math video lessons for grades three, four, and five, I thought it might be kind of cool to create some videos for you, for the teachers, the parents, the tutors, basically anybody who's looking to help third, fourth, and fifth graders to make math make sense. So let's go ahead and break down some strategies for remembering what you do with a decimal for fifth grade today. All right, let's imagine that we have three and six tenths and we have six hundredths, okay? And we're gonna do the four different operations with them right now. So what are those four different operations? Well, we have addition, we have subtraction, we have multiplication and we have division, okay? Now, adding and subtracting, I think for the most part people understand, but here's something that I always tell students. When you add or subtract and you have numbers with decimals, you need to line them up, okay? So I say it like this. When you add or subtract with decimals, you need to line them up like a soldier, okay? So for instance, let's go ahead and take the three and six tenths and we're going to line them up, line up those decimals. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that decimal's right there and then place the other digits in the correct place and add them up, right? Now, what do we need right here? A zero, right? And this is a simple example, but it is a fifth grade example. So zero plus six would be six. Six plus zero would be six bring down your decimal and three plus zero is three and we would read this as three and sixty six hundredths all right when you add or subtract with decimals you need to line them up which we did zero minus six is don't forget to regroup take one that becomes a five give one that becomes a ten ten minus six is four 5 minus 0 is 5, bring down your decimal, and then 3. So if we were to find the difference of these two decimals, numbers with decimals, it would be 3 and 54 hundredths, right? Let's go ahead and get to the more challenging ones. They're fun. Okay, so I taught you that when you add or subtract with decimals, you need to line them up. But when you multiply with decimals, you shift it at the end. When you divide with decimals, you shift it to begin. Add or subtract, we line them up. When you multiply with decimals, we shift, shift them at the end. Or shift it at the end, I think, shift it at the end shift what shift the decimal and when you divide using decimals you shift it to begin these are just little rhymes that i have students memorize to help it make more sense okay so let's go ahead and multiply because those have three digits i'm actually gonna do this right here now it didn't matter that our decimals were lined up what i did was i just put another digit there in the hundredths place just to have it um be easier to flow through with multiplication. Okay, so we're gonna shift it at the end, meaning I'm gonna pretend like that decimal isn't even there right now. I just multiply like I would normally do using standard algorithm. So six times zero is zero. Six times six is 36. Woo, it's high up here in the clouds. Nice landing, dude. Six times three is 18 plus three is 21. Okay. And now the other ones would just be zero, zero times zero, zero, zero times six, zero, 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 zero. So we're good here. But now we're gonna imagine that there's this invisible decimal right here, okay, at the end. And now we're going to shift that decimal at the end. What we do, now remember here, I put a, an, a zero on the end right there, right? What we're gonna do is count the digits behind the decimal. We have, here's a decimal and we have one two digits behind the decimal there. Here's our other decimal and we count our digits. So three, four, that's four digits total that are behind the decimal. And that's how many times we shift it. One, two, three, four. 
out with the old decimal, in with the new, and when we rewrite it, it looks like that. Or 216 thousandths. So again, when you multiply with decimals, you pretend like they're not there and you shift it at the end. When we divide with decimals, we're going to shift it to begin. So I'm going to go ahead and put my divisor out here. I'm going to call the six hundredths that divisor and our dividend is going to go inside. Okay. Now, before we even get started, we're going to go ahead and shift our decimal. What do I mean by that? Shifting the decimal to begin. Well, we're going to look at the divisor and the divisor needs to be a whole number. If it's not a whole number, I teach students that it's, oops, not a whole, and we need to make it into a whole number. So we're gonna go ahead and shift it over until boom, if the decimal were right here, it would just be six, right? Now it's a whole number, out with the old, in with the new, and whatever we do on the outside, we have to make sure that we do on the inside too. So one hop, two hops on the inside, out with the old, in with the new, and we're gonna throw down a zero right there because we've got an empty spot. Now, I do not let students do their work like this. It looks messy, it looks sloppy. We're gonna rewrite it right now. So we've got six now as our divisor, and we have, careful, we've got 360 in our dividend slot. Okay, and now you just divide like normal. So if you have your kids doing um, standard algorithm or Partial quotients, you can do it that way. For instance, partial quotients would be times 60 would be 360. So your answer would be 60, okay? So to review, when you add or subtract with decimals, you need to line them up. When you multiply with decimals, you forget about them and shift them at the end. When you divide with decimals, you shift them to begin. Just the divisor. Make sure the divisor is a whole number. All right, everybody, that is it for today's episode. I hope that makes a little bit more sense. If you think that you need some more practice or maybe even your students need some more practice, I really encourage you to check out my website, McCarthyMathAcademy.com. There you can see tons of videos. There's even a free trial there for you to try out some free videos and you just have to find the videos that match what you need here. So, and if you ever need help finding those videos, just email me and I will definitely point you in the right direction, okay? If you have a specific skill that you would like for me to model in an upcoming episode for third grade, fourth grade, or fifth grade, you can drop it in the comments below. You can also email me at McCarthyMathAcademy at gmail.com and I'm on Facebook and Instagram, so feel free to message me there too. All those links, by the way, I know, I know I just threw a bunch at you, but all those links are in the description box below. Before we go, let me remind you that you were born for a purpose. You matter and what you choose to do with your life matters too. So go out there and change the world in your own special way. And I cannot wait to see you on the next episode of Math 345 Support. See you later.